Hi, this is Shadi and today I need to discuss a very important topic regarding judo, uh, grappling, the evolution of the game in both sports and self-defense. Uh, where is it headed or where is it now uh, comparing to 100 years ago, etc. And there is a lot that's been going on and these need to be uh, discussed because I feel that What's happening today is the true missing link to what judo had prior to 1925 or 1923. So we all know how judo is very efficient when it comes to really holding someone down, uh, pressuring, uh, switching from position to position uh, the way you see here in front of you. And then until your opponent is 100% helpless, where you can execute a a technique uh, whether it's a lock or a choke and absolutely ending the fight the same goes for the guard on your back someone cannot do anything even though they are right on top of you but you are still in control uh, this is the game for the upper body when it comes to uh, Japanese judo ground grappling neiwaza etc so judo even though like we see today is just throws and very minimal uh, groundwork in IJF the game has indeed evolved when it comes to gripping tactics uh, strength training methodology training science even when lifting weights the um, trainers or the athletes are far stronger now um, far more muscular we have nutrition science there is BED involved I'm sure all of that has contributed to the th throws we see today like the Russians the Georgians um, it has evolved, even Neiwaza, there is some sort of evolution, it's very minimal, it's very subtle, uh, the sweeps, Fabio Basile, the stuff he does, all, there is evolution, however, when it comes to uh, taking a judo or adding what's been missing, uh, it has been stagnant when it comes to uh, the ground aspect, because keep in mind, in 1923, uh, leg locks were banned by the Kodokan, uh, even in Kosen Judo style uh, competitions and in 1925 neck cranks became illegal so it became you know guard play uh, top control uh, just and chokes arm bars uh, kimuras and triangles it became like the basic stuff we see in white belt and blue belt but when it comes to really uh, getting far in techniques it has been stagnant however uh, the missing link is now available and that is the leg lock game that we have in BJJ whether from John Danaher he contributed a lot the stuff you see in ADCC uh, regardless of the PED use etc or the EBI uh, that's what's been missing in judo and that is the development of the leg lock game now leg locks have been having a stigma or uh, they've been stigmatized because this they've been seen as opportunistic uh, you know you're not do anything you grab a limb and you just started yanking it you can't pass guard you can't uh, make someone incredibly helpless and then attacking the way you do with the upper body however now this has changed with the ashigarami game i myself when i was a beginner i was rolling with a blue belt i didn't know what i was doing I couldn't do anything I saw his ankle I just caught it and started yanking it so I understand when people say that but now the leg lock game has been you know incredibly revolutionized now before we talk about the leg lock game of today I need to talk about the leg lock game of the past and that is with judo so here is one example where you pull guard you reap the knee and then you apply pressure with your hips here you just uh, instead of passing guard you just pull the ankle here you take advantage of the back mount of the mistake um, here someone is trying to do an ashigarami you you yank the knee uh, one of the big examples is uh, Hicks and Gracie who demonstrates perfect classical kodokan judo here uh, I'm sorry Hickson I love you but I have to show this uh, instead of passing guard or going to the uh, bottom uh, the top position here he just grabs the foot, uh, demonstrates a single leg X and just uh, does a full controlled ankle lock, uh, 
hindering uh, the opponent's uh, movements and making them helpless. No guard passing, however, it does require a lot of skills because they cannot pull their leg, they cannot do anything. Here is a mount escape turned into an outside heel hook. Uh, again, Ashigarami or single leg X. Uh, when you turn the hips, you are exposing the heel. Um, when you do single leg X, you actually pull towards you. You don't push with the foot that's on the hip. That's a big mistake. John Danaher talks about this. Uh, you pull towards you, you really make everything tight, you expose the heel, and then you attack with the heel hook. So none of them are be establishing a position and then attacking. It's just, it just seems a bit opportunistic. However, when you really close everything in, then it becomes like a full leg lock system. Other than that, it's just opportunistic. Here, someone is trying to escape side control. You grab the limb the way I did and just yank it and get everything tight and get the tap it's different from applying here John Danaher is demonstrating the uh, single leg X and how effective it is when done right however your opponent moves uh, you are still in control um, here one example is Kron Gracie uh, he catches Otavio Souza's ankle you know there's no dominant position he just gets it uh, or one good example of leg locks is you take the la riva, you sweep, and you attack straight ankle lock. That's one a classical example. But now the stuff you see with the saddle, the honey hole, uh, ashigarami game, as John Danaher calls it, whatever it is, um, it's all have been very studied. And the way Gordon Ryan controlled a cyborg, this is what judo has been missing is that to establish a dominant position or the inside position and then attacking and rendering someone incredibly helpless way before the leg lock even comes. Uh, John Danaher uh, demonstrates this perfectly when he was on the JRE podcast and he started narrating and dissecting what Gordon Ryan has been doing. Uh, the, he said the fight was lost 40 seconds even before the leg lock came in. So it's kind of like establishing top position, side control or whatever, and then going for a choke or a lock. Um, this is, in my opinion, the missing link of judo is the uh, bottom half game when it comes to applying leg locks. It was uh, getting like an opportunistic way of accessing the legs and then applying a single leg X or a Dararriva and then going for the leg lock. And don't get me wrong, it's very good, it's very tight and like I said, the basics will take you a very long way. But for example, uh, watching Craig Jones uh, DVD uh, down under leg attacks, uh, it seems that the single leg X is just a starting point for the system then you go for figure four leg locks, then you go for like a saddle, whatever. No, there's a lot of name to it. Um, the uh, footage I showed John Danaher showing uh, the single leg X, it's called uh, Heel Hook Masterclass. It's a 20 minute video. I encourage all of you to go and watch it. It's filled with information, how you go from single leg X to figure four uh, to really expose the heel. Uh, you know, really, uh, how do you say, in a, uh, disabling your opponent and then finally you attack. It really demonstrates his philosophy. Uh, this, in my opinion, is the missing link for judo. Now, is it good or does it have its benefits? I would say yes and no. Yes, when it comes to uh, the competition aspect, uh, you know, as the athletes, you know, learn, they become very efficient. You need to add more to your arsenal uh, as an element of surprise and strategy in order to surprise your opponent and really get the win. Uh, this is really important in my opinion. This is the evolution of every game, not just in martial arts. And that is, you know, adding new strategies, adding new tactics. And the leg lock game is inevitably one of them. We already honed down the upper body part even in judo newaza you, you don't even have to do bjj to be efficient in controlling the upper body and also guard game now there are people who are adding new guards like the z guard etc but you know you can do without uh 
if you watch Kron Gracie in Metamoris uh, or ADCC, his open guard and close guard game are just razor sharp, um, etc. So, but uh, the no part, I said there's a yes and a no. The no part is that I tend to agree a bit with Keenan Cornelius when he says that ADCC or EBI or Polaris, it's all now just leg locks, leg locks, you know. Uh, they're easily accessible and they're trying to do figure fours, uh, single leg X and just attacking the legs ruthlessly. You see uh, Gary Tonin versus Palharis. It was just 20 minutes of leg locks attempts. So in a way, I do agree because when you focus so much on something, the other part tends to uh, regress just like judo. You know, they focus so much on upper body and etc. Uh, and even throwing that Neiwaza became like on the back part so um, it's a bit dangerous when it comes to the upper body because you know there's a de-evolution uh, you know it might tend to regress now I hope I'm wrong but it might tend to regress in, in this aspect uh, so and also the gi chokes you, you tend to lose them in the no gi EBI all that stuff so in a way you tend to lose a few things yes uh, it's inevitable it's part of every game uh, when you go a certain direction you tend to neglect a few things and just like judo judo is no different when it comes to leg locks uh, leg grabs and just neck cranks in general when you tend to uh, focus on basically throwing and establishing upper body control uh, either to pin or just to lock a shoulder or a choke so uh, the other thing is that when it it is it un incredibly necessary? Uh, no. Here's why: if you are someone who's really involved in self-defense, like Hicks and Gracie, uh, Gracie University, they talk a lot about you know street stuff, etc. Our leg locks, you know, that really advanced, razor sharp leg lock game. You see uh, Craig Jones doing or Gordon Ryan doing. Uh, necessary no absolutely not i'm not gonna go down establish inside position and then just attack the legs it's just not gonna happen the only way you would use leg locks in self-defense is in my opinion the following uh you did kind of like an ochigari or something that can land you in someone's open guard or closed guard then you can retreat back and do the straight ankle lock the way you saw hexen doing then yes, that, that that's an uh, option for leg locks. For example, if I did an Ochigari and someone, or uh, if you don't know, it's an inside trip and someone, you know, was not badly hurt and you can easily assess their character and you know that they're up to no good and you know that they're gonna come up and retaliate and they seem to be, to be very strong, then yes, go for a leg lock because basically your life is on the line. Uh, escaping mount you know mounts are very common in street fights even some a com a, a, like a common hoodlum he just uh, come up mount you and just started you know striking this is where something like the self-defense unit of Hicks and Gracie is important how to uh, escape punches uh, when someone's mounting you and then escape the mount itself your life is in danger yes go for a heel hook by all means be my guest, uh, but it's like a little small fight. There's no need to just control someone and just negotiate. But again, uh, fights can differ. You know, you you might be saving your child's life. You you might be with your wife or your husband. Again, street fights are different. It's not just techniques. It's assessing the situation, assessing psychology, your own psychology, uh, analyzing. Who, the one who's in front of you and uh, you can see that maybe someone is just uh, you know kind of being spazzy and just asking for a little trouble and there there are some who are just out there to basically end your life then yes all gloves are off go for the heel hook you know cripple them whatever but are you gonna do the stuff you see on EBI or no are you just gonna go for like a single leg X or uh, rip the knee ashigarami or uh, like a figure four and doing it because you know like i said passing guard is big deal on the street even someone that doesn't know kick to the face can end it all uh 
so the old system uh, the old Kodokan judo system you see Hickson doing uh, in Kawashi's book the one I showed a while back is more than enough for self-defense you just need to practice it now this one this is another issue is that there's even no practice of leg locks in judo and that should come back especially for self-defense self-defense courses etc uh, there's so many things wrong with the system whether it's bjj or judo there's a lot of things to be taken into consideration that's why i have endless topics to discuss with you basically um so when it comes to competition yes this was what judo is missing is the leg lock game or the top uh, bottom half game the way we have a top uh half game uh this is a long rant but it's a very important topic to discuss you know again street self-defense you do like craig jones the della riva straight ankle lock or like hickson but other than that you you really don't need like four or five hours of instructionals of how to apply a leg lock game by john danaher unless you go and compete on a very high level other than that you just don't need to in my opinion uh, i hope you found this informative um, this is a very important topic in my opinion it involves the evolution of everything in, when it comes to grappling self-defense competition just basically an all-in-one uh, subject if you have anything else to add uh, please uh, this is a very important topic i'm sure a lot of you have tons of opinions share them down below this was shady and thank you for listening